Welcome to steaming, well it's not steaming, it's not humid, really extremely hot Las Vegas. We're here at the Four Seasons Hotel adjacent to Black Hat 2024 and we are streaming live interviews. I'm Jeff Mann, co-host of Paul Security Weekly, part of the Cyber Risk Alliance family and I'm here today talking to Vivek Ramachandran. He is the founder and CEO of a company called SquareX. Vivek, welcome. Thank you so much for having me on the show, Jeff. Uh, sure. Absolute pleasure and looking forward to this discussion. Yeah, me too. Tell us uh, a little bit about your, your background. How'd you get into cybersecurity? Yeah, so I've been in cybersecurity 20 years. Uh, started off like 1999 okay. when I heard about these DDoS attacks happening against Yahoo and all of these guys. Right. And I heard about this hacker Mixter who'd created this tool called Tribal Flood Network. Mm -hmm. Didn't know anything about security, downloaded the tool, was even more confused, <laughs> started to get curious, started yeah. to tinker, and that is really how my whole love with security started. And then, you know, multiple different Lowell security research, you know, found a couple of attacks, spoken mm -hmm. many years at DEF CON and Black Hat, and eventually started my very first company, uh, Pentester Academy, and mm -hmm. then now SquareX. Oh, we should talk about pen testing sometime. Another episode. Yeah. <laughs> I, am a, I am a former pen tester myself, oh. going back to the early 90s. But uh, uh, that was your past. You're now at a company called SquareX. What, what made you decide to start this company? So at Pentester, you know, we spend a lot of time with red blue teams, mm -hmm. looking at different attacker, you know, techniques and tactics and all of that. And that's really where what I realized is, even though the web browser is the most used application, mm -hmm. uh, you know, on any desktop or laptop, that is also the least protected. Mm -hmm. And a lot of initial access attacks happen through the browser where attackers might end up targeting employees. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, I noticed that the only real security solution available were these web proxies. Right. And I figured like, you know, they weren't doing a good job, you know, me being from an entire attacker background. Mm -hmm. And that is what led me to kind of this idea where we felt like if you could build a security product sitting in the browser itself, mm -hmm. then it's easy to detect a lot of the attacks because you have access to all of this rich information you know, DOM events and whatnot, right. uh, making your algorithms a lot more powerful. And that is what led me to start SquareX around 14, 15 months back. Uh, and it's been an exciting journey. You know, we've launched our enterprise product, you know, people are starting to use it. Uh, and it's been amazing. So, uh, I'm an old timer. Yeah. Uh, been around from, from the very beginning when uh, organizations first started plugging into the internet when the internet was becoming <laughs> a thing back in the early 90s um, there's and later on I got into PCI we've talked a little bit about that before um, but there was this concept of a three-tier architecture where the web browser was sort of left outside of everything and it was left defenseless it was yeah. assumed to be compromised but it was going to talk to systems that were you know logically in a DMZ that would logically talk to back-end systems where all the data was that Correct. people would possibly want to steal so you're suggesting that in you know in the 21st century in the 2020s now we need to start focusing more on that browser and, sure. and provide some level of protection there that all everything else gee hasn't been good enough Yes, absolutely. And that's also because to your point, you know, fundamentally architectures have changed in a very sure. big way. Now everything is cloud first. Yep. Most organizations do not own, you know, both their security devices as well as their infrastructure and storage devices anymore. What devices? It's all software. Yeah, exactly. These days. <laughs> exactly. Everything is SaaS, everything is in the cloud. Yeah. And that's really where, you know, if you think about it, the perimeter of the network previously where you could like really chalk it out mm -hmm. in a very accurate way, unfortunately at this point in time is is as widespread as wherever your employees are. Mm -hmm. And I think in this new age of, you know, work anywhere, hybrid work, where employees have keys to the kingdom, where even if an attacker managed to compromise, you know, a single employee, they could end up accessing the cloud storage, mm -hmm. where now there's, you know, absolute treasure trove of data depending on, you know, what authorization the employee has. So I think in this new generation of everything being online, the web browser is the gateway, almost to an extent, a device in itself, because sure. You know, browsers are so complex now, almost like an operating system. Mm -hmm. And that is really where our kind of like unique perspective on the matter is, if you secure the browser, and that just is in the software vulnerabilities, mm -hmm. it's also application layer attacks which can happen, you sure. know, SSO attacks and whatnot. And if you can do that, 
then essentially you're protecting against, you know, an attacker being able to steal credentials or do other things to the rest of your, you know, organizational data residing in the cloud. So things that I'm familiar with, again, from a PCI perspective, right. protection of e-commerce sites primarily. Right. Um, PCI version 4 came out earlier this year, and there's new requirements, one of which is where it used to be either have frequent security testing of your website or have a WAF, Web Application yeah. Firewall, come next April, everybody's going to have to have a WAF. How, how is a WAF the same or different from what Square X is doing? Yeah. So I think, you know, when you look at web application firewalls, they are primarily deployed to protect a site or a group of sites that you mm -hmm. own. Now, today's, you know, kind of internet first employee is on so many third party websites. People are on LinkedIn all the time, on social media networks all the time, mm -hmm. clicking on random links, going to websites that you don't control, where you really, you know, don't even have a WAF when it kind of comes to those sites. And that's really where what attackers have figured out is you have your company webmail open in a tab mm -hmm. and your personal Gmail open in another. And you're doing so many of these activities. So your webmail could be protected by let's say email security. You may have your internal websites protected by a WAF, mm -hmm. but this wild, wild west, you know, the rest of the internet, mm -hmm. unfortunately is absolutely, you know, completely open. And mm -hmm. this is really where attackers can use many of those sites, compromise employees. and. I can give you a very interesting attack which is happening today. Sure. Everyone is, you know, talking about AI, right? ChatGPT comes out with a new uh, version. We had to bring that up. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> and, and briefly, so, talk yeah. About that. And and what tends to happen is people go online and there's a post somewhere on social media which says, "Hey, the latest version of ChatGPT, you can get it free if you download this extension and install it." Mm. And most organizations don't have managed browsers, which means, hey, anyone can just go and install a Chromium extension. Right. But once you install that extension, it can look at literally every website that you're visiting right now. So attackers have started to use many of these as attack vectors mm -hmm. to steal information entirely in the browser. So where even if you had good endpoint security, it has zero visibility into the browser. Right. So many of these attacks now, the whole attack life cycle is completely in the browser and this is a very big change from what used to happen before, right? right? Where a credential stealer would have to be an EXE which gets downloaded, right. infects your system, and now is watching and monitoring you. Gotcha. But a browser extension can just sit in the browser, completely monitor everything you're doing. And so many people now are working remotely because of you know COVID and whatnot. Um, there's that, that many more browsers out there. Absolutely, absolutely, and look, most people have multiple browsers that they love using, right? right? We all have maybe, you know, some people hate Chromium for whatever reason, mm. we don't want to get into in, in our <laughs> short discussion. Uh, but, you know, you have Firefox, you have Safari, you have Brave, you have whatnot. And that is really where I think there's an entire ecosystem of these browser applications, mm -hmm. which unfortunately aren't managed at this point in time, which need to be secured. And, and that is really what SquareX does. So you're not building a new browser, or are you? You're building security into the browsers that are out there. Correct, and that's a great okay. question, right? Every attempt that people have made to build a brand new browser which is privacy conscious, security mm -hmm. conscious, I think the adoption hasn't just happened. Right. Uh, Brave is a perfect example, right? Yeah. Even over, I think, maybe the past decade, mm -hmm. Brave only has 40 million users. There are probably three or four billion people on the internet today. <laughs> right. So I, when we started off, you know, we felt like you had to integrate with what people were already using, mm -hmm. rather than force people to use your application, right. right? Which would be your own browser. And that is really where very consciously we said, we want to build out these browser extensions. They're, you know, easy to install, very lightweight. People are used to installing browser extensions like ad blockers and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And that's where SquareX deploys as a browser extension. Now, okay. if you absolutely wanted a browser, you know what, we could bake the extension into a Chromium build mm -hmm. and still give you that if, if that's what you want. Gotcha. Um, we have a few minutes left. You mentioned uh, you're speaking at DEF CON. Right. Tell us a little bit about your, your talk. Yeah. Give so, us a, a preview. Yeah. So when we were doing all of this research around, you know, web attacks, mm -hmm. we realized that the incumbents were really these web proxies, secure web gateways, which mm -hmm. are part of SASE and SSE solutions. The world's largest cybersecurity vendors are, you know, kind of having SWGs at this point. Mm -hmm. And SWGs are touted as something which can block malware, malicious websites, and all of that. So what our talk is going to be doing 
is basically showing that architecturally, SWGs are a broken concept. Hmm. And it is possible for attackers to smuggle in even well-known malware, which typically they should be detecting, right. and completely bypass these secure web gateways. Hmm. So we are putting out over 25 different bypasses as a starting point. And because these are architectural issues, it is impossible for vendors to go about fixing it. Hmm. Uh, and that's the main stage talk that we are doing at DEF CON, which you know, I've kind of named in a very cliche way, which is breaking secure web gateways for fun and profit. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Um, that begs a whole question that we probably don't have time for about responsible disclosure, but right. do you have ideas for how to architecturally yes. fix things? Does Square yeah. X help to architecturally yeah. fix things? That's a great question. So we've reached out to some of the bigger vendors mm -hmm. and you know, no surprise, of course, you know, some of them say they're aware mm -hmm. and that's about it. And some of them say, look, maybe we fix it. We'll, we'll see when the talk is out. So absolutely, what we feel is if there are browser attacks happening, the most amount of rich data, whether it comes to DOM data, you know, whether it comes to user interactivity events, browser events, and all of that is available in the browser. Mm -hmm. And that's really where if you wanted to build a security product, the number one requirement is full visibility. Mm -hmm. And the only place you have that is in the browser itself. Gotcha. So based upon that, what we feel is Squarex or anybody else, I mean, don't want to really tout our solution as the only solution, mm -hmm. but anyone who's probably integrating and building a browser native security product mm -hmm. would be able to solve browser attacks a lot better compared to a cloud proxy, which is trying to look at network data, mm -hmm. HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in a very flat way and infer probably what is happening in the browser at an application layer, right? Mm. Because there's so much going on once that HTML JavaScript comes over from a browser rendering perspective, you know, session management, what kind of events trigger based upon user interactivity and all of that. So we feel the future of web attack detection happening against your employees when they're online mm -hmm. is browser native security. Got you. So I have two more questions. Yeah. Um, trying to think of which order um, on our show you know yeah. several of the co-hosts are, are pretty well respected and well-renowned hackers and penetration right. testers and I off the air I've, I've challenged them over the years to you know me I'm sitting in my home office behind my standard Verizon right you know firewall or whatever they may or may not have built into the gateway right. they gave me um, and I'm on my laptop that's company issued and I always challenge them find me show me how easy or hard it is right. to target me right. um, and I sort of have the same question for you so you're talking about the browser vulnerabilities right. uh, how are you going out finding and targeting people hypothetically yeah. that, that you know how's the bad guy doing correct that's a great question and I think you know it always starts with a little bit of social engineering and let sure. me explain right so one of the attacks That's what they said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one of the attacks we've seen is very prevalent right now is mm -hmm. the fake recruiter. Okay. So what tends to happen is, you know, the market is down, everybody's looking either for a good job or a better one, or unfortunately some people are out of jobs or, you know, mm -hmm. are on notice periods. So a typical attack which is happening is someone contacts you over LinkedIn and basically says, I'm a recruiter, we are hiring for one of your competitors. Mm -hmm. This comes with an automatic pay raise. Mm -hmm. By the way, click here, you know, upload your resume and we'll actually give you a job description document. Gotcha. Now, what tends to happen is, you know, most people will jump at it, you know, go through the hoops, fill in whatever form mm -hmm. and then download the job description requirement because right. you want to kind of like quickly read it. Right. And that is really where what's been happening is these documents have malicious macros. Mm -hmm. And unbelievably, and this is probably a topic for you know another show, <laughs> most endpoint security solutions today, unfortunately, are very bad when it comes to detecting malicious macros in Office documents compared to EXEs, right? Because that has evolved over the 15 to 20 years. It's funny you say that because I'm giving a talk this year and I have a slide deck that's 25 years old Crazy. talking about <laughs> macros and attachments. Exactly. Or, exactly. Even, I thought we solved that problem. <laughs> yeah, it's unbelievably some of the supposedly best solutions in endpoint security still don't do it. Mm -hmm. So that is a typical attack and what tends okay. to happen, Jeff, is now a cloud proxy isn't going to be able to understand all of those hoops because it is only looking at it on a per URL basis. Right. Now what somebody like SquareX does is we demy demystify all of that and show you an ent entire attack graph mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. where we say your employee was targeted on LinkedIn, got mm-hmm. a DM. From there, he went through these three websites. Gotcha. Finally, a document was being downloaded. And because we do all of this detection in browser, we are able to look at even Microsoft Office documents entirely in the browser on the client side, mm-hmm. see that it has a macro, pick up suspicious functions in it, and we can block it if that's what your enterprise policy does. Yeah. So when we go into accounts, we basically talk about you know browser blindness, the fact that you absolutely don't know what's going on in there. Mm-hmm. And that's a very good use case to kind of like build up what we're doing. So yeah, I mean, that would be my answer to the first question. Well, and we're out of time, so I can't, uh, you sort of answered my second question, which was sort of like process and best practices and other things you can do. Uh, Tell us real quick, when's your DEFCON DEFCON talk? So my DEFCON talk is this Friday, 5 p.m., track four. So 5 p.m. track four, that's Pacific time. Yes. That's going to do it for us. We actually ran over a little bit. It was so uh, such a good conversation. I don't mind. Uh, for more information uh, about SquareX and what they're doing, go to securityweekly.com forward slash square, S-Q-A-R-E-X. S-Q-R-X.com. On our website, it's S-Q-A-R-E-X-B-H for Black Hat, but your website is sqrx.com not to confuse anybody. (laughs) That's going to wrap for us right now. Enjoy the rest of your day.